Since December 1, China has taken a strategic step that could redefine the global semiconductor industry. A new regulation on rare earths requires that any lithography equipment containing at least 0.1% of these Chinese materials must obtain an export license. Additionally, exports of machinery and essential materials for advanced chip manufacturing, including logic semiconductors of 14 nanometers or smaller, are now subject to a case-by-case -case approval system. This move not only ensures China controls its strategic resources but also directly impacts Dutch companies dominating the sector, such as ASML, the world leader in lithography machines. The geopolitical context of this decision traces back to the Netherlands' intervention in Nexperia, a Chinese semiconductor company, on September 30. Without prior warning, Amsterdam removed the Chinese CEO and transferred 99% of the shares to an independent trust. Officially, management deficiencies and risks to European economic security were cited, though no evidence supported these claims. For China, this was perceived as a politically coordinated act with the United States, which had already added Nexperia's parent company, Vintage Technology, to its restricted entities list. A critical factor for the Netherlands is that most of Nexperia's actual production, over 70%, is located in China, in cities such as Dongan and Shanghai. Following the Dutch intervention, Beijing quickly retaliated by blocking exports of power semiconductors and other key products to Europe. Production at Chinese plants fell from 90% to below 10%, leaving European customers without immediate access to essential chip. The industrial impact was immediate. In Germany, Volkswagen and BMW factories slowed production, incurring millions in daily losses and doubling delivery times for high-end models. Within just two weeks, Europe lost over $3.5 billion in production value, while thousands of workers faced temporary layoffs or reduced hours. This episode exposed the vulnerability of European industry due to dependence on critical foreign suppliers like Nexperia. The most direct strategic blow hit ASML. Dutch lithography machines, used to produce the world's most advanced chips, rely heavily on Chinese rare earths. Essential components such as ultrafine cerium lenses, permanent magnets, and magnetic levitation systems have no viable alternatives outside China. Replacement attempts increased costs by 40% and reduced performance by 30%, highlighting the Netherlands' critical dependence on Chinese strategic minerals. China controls roughly 90% of global rare earth refining, turning this regulation into a direct strategic weapon against Dutch technological dominance. The new law also mandates end-user reporting, preventing diversion through third parties, and requires case-by-case -case approval for equipment linked to high-end chip production. This means ASML's production could drop sharply if licenses are delayed, with potential losses exceeding $3 billion annually. Meanwhile, China continues to advance technologically. Huawei and the Chinese Academy of Sciences have achieved breakthroughs considered impossible by Western experts, including extreme ultraviolet, EUV lithography systems capable of producing chips below 7 nanometers. This breaks the ESML Western monopoly and allows China to manufacture advanced chips autonomously despite international sanctions and restrictions. The impact on Chinese industry is immediate. Companies like Xiaomi, Tencent, Alibaba, and BYD are developing their own innovation ecosystems, investing billions in AI and domestic hardware development. The ban on NVIDIA chip purchases in China creates a gap that local manufacturers are rushing to fill, accelerating the formation of self-sufficient supply chains. This paradigm shift shows that true technological power no longer lies solely in producing advanced products but in controlling critical inputs. Rare earths, strategic minerals, specialized software, and advanced manufacturing technology. Europe and the United States face a dilemma. Prolonged sanctions may encourage Chinese technological autonomy and reduce Western influence in the global industry irreversibly. The effects extend beyond production. 
Increasing automation and new digital tools require advanced skills in microfabrication, materials engineering, and high-performance computing. Nations that fail to adapt their education systems quickly may face knowledge gaps that threaten long-term industrial competitiveness. Analysts agree that the current dispute cannot be resolved solely through trade agreements or regulatory adjustments. Debates are emerging over new multilateral mechanisms to ensure a stable flow of strategic resources. Decisions made today will shape the industrial architecture of the coming years and determine who leads global innovation. Controlling critical resources is no longer just an economic advantage. It is strategic power and technological autonomy. China sends a clear message. Whoever controls fundamental materials will shape the future of global technology. The combination of rare earth control measures, advances in lithography, and domestic chip development places the West in an unprecedented scenario. The global semiconductor industry faces a profound reshuffle, where dependence on strategic materials becomes decisive. The technological world is entering a new era, and today's decisions will define global leadership for decades to come. China continues to dominate critical industries, despite continued efforts by the U.S. from a breakthrough in chip-making technology to its stronghold on the rare earths market, the West is really struggling to catch up with China's critical might. Take a look at this next report for more. China has announced a significant advancement in its semiconductor technology with the development of a new laser-based immersion lithography machine. This new equipment achieves a resolution of 65 nanometers, a notable improvement from the previous 90 nanometers. The resolution of lithography machines is crucial for chip making as it determines how finely integrated circuits can be printed silicon wafers. Current leading technology from ASML has a resolution of around 8 nanometers. Despite these advancements, Chinese companies are still working to close the gap with global leaders like ASML, especially given the U.S. sanctions that have restricted access to advanced semiconductor equipment. Imagine a single technological breakthrough so powerful that it shakes the entire global semiconductor industry. In early 2025, Chinese scientists unveiled a new EUV lithography system, a machine capable of producing advanced microchips without relying on ASML, the Dutch giant long considered untouchable in this field. The result? ASML is now facing a crisis that could redefine the global chip landscape. What China just achieved isn't just incremental, it's a game changer. Today, we break down how this development happened, why ESML is struggling, and what it means for the future of semiconductors and global technology. For decades, the global semiconductor industry has relied heavily on ASML, whose EUV systems are essential for manufacturing the most advanced chip. Companies like TSMC, Intel, and Samsung have built entire product lines around ASML's technology. Western governments have long considered this supply chain a strategic advantage. China, however, has been quietly preparing for the day when it could no longer depend on foreign suppliers. Starting as early as 2022, Chinese research institutes, backed by billions in state funding, began developing homegrown EUV technology. Tens of thousands of engineers from Huawei, SMIC, and other major firms were mobilized into confidential labs across Shanghai and Shenzhen. The goal was clear, full semiconductor self-sufficiency. In March 2025, a little-known company called Sikar announced a major breakthrough. They had built a fully operational domestic EUV lithography system capable of achieving subnanometer patterns on wafers, technology previously thought impossible without ESML's equipment. This wasn't just a prototype. Sikar demonstrated real-world chip production, complete with electron microscope imaging of successfully processed wafers. Independent experts confirmed the results, leaving engineers in the West stunned. Suddenly, China could produce advanced chips like 7 nanometers and beyond entirely with domestic tools, bypassing ASML, TSMC, and other Western suppliers. 
The ramifications were instant and massive. YesML saw its service centers in China empty out. Thousands of employees were reassigned or laid off. TSMC and Western chip manufacturers faced disruption in supply chains, causing stock price drops and production delays. Meanwhile, Chinese tech companies immediately benefited. Huawei released the Mate 60 Pro using fully domestic 7 nanometers processors, proving that ESML and Western tech were no longer indispensable. Investors around the world began redirecting capital toward Chinese semiconductor firms, realizing the balance of power in chip manufacturing was shifting. China's strategy didn't stop at technology. They implemented export controls on critical rare earth elements, essential for advanced chip. This move affected Germany, Japan, the United States, and other high-tech nations that relied on Chinese materials for their own production. At the same time, the country ramped up massive domestic investments. New plants, advanced research labs, and accelerated engineering programs in top universities. The strategy was comprehensive. Control the materials, control the technology, control the future. Western nations scrambled. The US and EU proposed new partnerships and supply chain diversification plans, while investors weighed the risks of continued dependence on Asia. YesML's dominance rested on two pillars, proprietary EUV technology and global reliance. Now, both pillars are under threat. Domestic Chinese EUV machines reduce dependency on ASML. Strategic export controls limit ESML's ability to operate fully in the Chinese market. Rising competition from local Chinese firms accelerates innovation domestically. Even if ESML continues to supply Europe, the US, and other allies, its position as the indispensable global leader is under unprecedented pressure. This breakthrough has far-reaching consequences. Supply chains must be redesigned and Western manufacturers must rethink production strategies. China gains geopolitical leverage in technology negotiations. Investors are moving capital toward Chinese semiconductor firms. And competition forces everyone to innovate faster or risk obsolescence. The era where ESML held uncontested influence may be coming to an end. The race for semiconductor supremacy has entered a new, high-stakes phase. One thing is clear. The global semiconductor landscape will never be the same. China's new EUV launch demonstrates the power of long-term planning, massive investment, and relentless engineering talent. If you want to stay ahead of these developments and understand how they will reshape the tech world, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. The future is being rewritten today, and the next chapter is just beginning. China's new EUV tech leaves ASML stunned. Global chip dominance is shifting fast. The Dutch government has taken control of Nexperia, a chip maker based in the Netherlands, to prevent key technology from being transferred to its parent company in China. It's the first time the Netherlands has invoked the Goods Availability Act, citing economic security concerns. The move allows the country's economy minister to block company decisions and suspend executives, while ensuring chip production continues in Europe. Nexperia's Chinese parent company Lingtech slammed the move as politically driven. The decision comes as tensions between the EU and China rise over access to advanced technology and critical raw materials. Imagine this. A single letter sent from the Netherlands triggers a global technological earthquake. That's exactly what happened with Nexperia. And this isn't just a business dispute. It's the opening move in a silent technological war against China. On October 26th, Nexperia announced it was suspending shipments to its Dingwan factory in China, claiming payment delays. But just days later, the truth came out. It was the Dutch headquarters that actually owed more than 1 billion yuan to its Chinese subsidiary. What looked like a simple financial issue suddenly became a political and economic power struggle. Behind this maneuver was the direct intervention of the Dutch government. At the end of September, the Ministry of Economic Affairs revived an old 1952 law, the Goods Supply Act, to take temporary control of Nexperia. Officially, this was to protect Europe's industrial security. In reality, it was a strategic move to slow China's technological rise. Since being acquired by Wingy Tech Technology in 2019,